Hello, I'm Troy Sangram, Senior Fellow and Director at KAI. In recent years, the world is increasingly focused on the issue of climate change and how to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. South Korea is no exception to this trend. The issue of climate change initially joined the policy agenda in South Korea under the Yuma Bok administration and has been addressed to varying degrees under the administrations of Park Geun-hye and Moon Jae-in. We are delighted today to have with us Dr. Chung So Young and Dr. Yi Do Eun to discuss their new paper for KAI, South Korea's Climate Change Policy, Achievements and Tasks Ahead, which explores the climate change policies of the last three South Korean administrations, provides policy recommendations for the new Yoon suk yeol administration. Dr. Chung is a professor of Division of International Studies at Korea University and an expert on climate change and sustainable development. Professor Chung also directs the Center for Climate and Sustainable Development Law and Policy and the Center for Global Climate and Marine Governance at Korea University. In addition to having served as an advisor to various ministries and governmental organizations, he recently served as an advisor to the Climate Change Energy Team of the Presidential Transition Committee. Dr. Lee is a research fellow and the head of the U.S. Office at the Center for Climate Change and Sustainable Development Law and Policy. She previously worked at the Global Green Growth Institute and has authored and collaborated on multiple research projects related to climate change and the role of the United Nations Security Council, marine governance in Northeast Asia, carbon border adjustments, and U.S. environmental policy on endangered species. Joining me for our discussion with Drs. Chung and Lee is Randall Jones. Randall is a distinguished non-resident fellow here at KAI and a professional fellow at Columbia University's Center on Japanese Economy and Business. Previously, he served as the Senior Counselor for East Asia and the head of the Japan-Korea desk at the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. To start us off, I'd like to turn things over to Randall. Well, thank you very much, Troy, and thank you, Dr. John and Dr. Lee, for this excellent paper. I was really struck by the second sentence in your abstract, and it says, uh, Korea has a unique opportunity to become an influential actor in the global effort to combat climate change. I was in uh, Seoul in 2010 when we had the G20 meeting, and uh, I was working for OECD. Our Secretary General, Angel Gurhia, was there, and he made the statement that Im Yang Bak is the godfather of, uh, of uh, green growth. And so in, in some respects, people might, might think Korea is already a front runner example. But what do you think Korea has to do uh, in addition to really become a, a model of, uh, of green growth and, and stopping climate change? Well, uh, if you uh, take a look at the uh, development of the Korean uh, society in general for thousand thousand years, uh, of course, uh, Koreans have uh, their own uh, efforts to address the issues by themselves domestically, but uh, more importantly, more inputs are used to come from the outside. So climate change issue is not the uh, exception. Uh, because it's a global issue, and then Korea exposed the uh, impact of climate change in general. And therefore, uh, as a country which has a heavy energy focused industry, we have received a lot of uh, pressures uh, from the outside. And the Koreans recognize the importance of climate, but this uh, additional uh, inputs from the outside has actually helped, uh, helped Korea to find a way of making this uh, matter of the burden that is climate change into the opportunity of the uh, of the uh, for the people that's a uh, green growth. So that's uh, my reading. Thank you. So, Dr. Chang, I'd like to sort of take this maybe you know, to the next step. You know, if we look back over the 15-year period or so of the prior three administrations, how has Korea itself changed in terms of its emissions and its focus on renewable technologies? Well, uh, Korea, uh, you know, uh, made its uh, its a uh, continuous efforts uh, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, as just I said, that, that it's very challenging for Korea to reduce greenhouse emissions as much as we want, uh, because of the given the factor that we have that's an energy intensive energy structure and having a lot of population we don't produce any uh, oil so uh, even if so because Korea wants to be a responsible country for the world and then the 
no matter which administration uh, we, we used to have, a uh, government itself uh, tries its own efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the sense that the renewable cannot be an exception. Uh, even the current administration led by President Yoon uh, emphasized the importance of nuclear, but he never said that, that he's gonna give up the renewables. Of course, there might be uh, some fluctuations in terms of how much you wanna give importance on the renewables, but renewables will uh, please uh, live with us. And then Korea, I actually will become very active to promote renewable technologies, not only inside Korea, but outside with our partner countries. So just to sort of follow up on that a bit, you know, you mentioned that President Yoon, you know, might change some of the emphasis and, you know, perhaps some different types of renewables or different amounts of renewables in his policies. Are there any common threads that connect climate change policy from the even Bach administration, you know, where we've talked about sort of it began to a degree through the recent Moon Jae-in administration? Well, uh, common threats uh, of, uh, of climate change uh, is, uh, comes from the natural phenomena. Uh, we suffer from the significant floods. And then the, this year, uh, during the summer, we used to have a lot of uh, rain. And then, then uh, you know, some, some days ago, we had a very strong typhoon. So this uh, natural phenomenon uh, gives the uh, sort of the necessary pressure uh, to the governments, no matter which admission they used to have, and they had to address that. And as I said, in addition to that, international inputs and then pressures sometimes, you know, has elevated Korea's uh, necessary to address the climate change issues uh, by any administration that we used to have. Thank you. Uh, going back to Im Yong Bak, the, uh, the godfather of green growth, uh, what do you think was his, his major accomplishment in the area of green growth? Okay. By the way, uh, as you said that the uh, OECD Secretary General called uh, him as a uh, god, uh, you know, the godfather of the green growth. Do you know what? Um, and then the President Lee at the time called the uh, Secretary General of the OECD as the father of the uh, you know, you know green growth. So, so there is a mutual understanding right. <laughs> on this uh, important issue. Right. Anyway. Uh, coming to the uh, Lee Myung Bak, uh, you know, time, I think uh, even up until now, uh, that's the peak time uh, when the Korea actually appeared at the international scene on the uh, climate change issues. I think uh, that's a fact, fact, historical fact. And then the, what are the evidences on this? Uh, first of all, uh, Korea as the first non annexon country, in other words, a developing country, voluntarily you know, announced that uh, it's gonna re it will reduce greenhouse gas emissions to significant amount. And then based on that, uh, Korea further committed to introduce the ETS. Uh, that's a very possibly controversial uh, to introduce into the society. It was the first uh, uh, you know, commitment made by Republic of Korea to do so on the voluntary basis. In addition to that, uh, Korea also uh, was willing to become a champion of international efforts uh, to address climate change, especially with the developing countries. Uh, what are the evidences? First of all, as you may know that uh, Korea at the time the hosted established actually Global Green Growth Institute. That's the intergovernmental organization to help out the developing countries to address the climate change issues. And then also further, Korea hosted uh, you know, very important climate change financial organization that's you know, Green Climate Fund. So there are many evidences. And as uh, Randall just mentioned uh, in earlier, that Korea also hosted the G20. As you may may not know that at the time that uh, Korea first developed the you know, agenda on the green growth in the context of G20. We have uh, many, many you know, evidences uh, about the, you know, sort of the very active uh, role of the Lee Myung Moo administration, not only domestically, but also at the global you know, context. Looking at specifically at the Korea ETS, um, it's been in operation, um, I guess, since 2016. Um, do you think it's going to be capable of helping Korea to meet its new nationally determined uh, objective of a 40% cut in emissions by 2030 relative to 2017? Uh, the system is still mainly giving the permits away rather than auctioning them off. So there's a question, how effective will it be 
as we try to make this very ambitious goal of a 40% cut. In, in, in order to answer the question, I think uh, we need to uh, see the how important the carbon pricing issue in general. Uh, there are, uh, you know, uh, under the Paris Agreement, I think uh, we are uh, heading toward more uh, micro level of addressing climate change issues, even by private sectors. We are talking about the voluntary markets and then the carbon financing markets and others. All of these things are required very sophisticated uh, calculation of uh, carbon amount. So uh, that uh, can be developed uh, by introducing carbon pricing measures. Of course, there are different carbon pricing measures available, including ETS and carbon tax and some others. And then in the context, uh, ETS, KETS has uh, made a significant contributions uh, to uh, Korea in order to not only uh, making climate change issues as a narrative, it is a setting the agenda matter. It's a more like a giving the uh, very good policy guidelines actually to the private sectors. As you may may not know that if you uh, ask the private sector who are participating in KETS, actually they know how to manage the scope one, scope two, scope three, and then they know the how to get an access to other uh, international financial markets. They are very familiar with the uh, Californian situation. In other words, that, that uh, this uh, pricing system uh, under the you know, ETS has help Korea actually to become a very significant part of international efforts. Of course, there are some challenges uh, to KETS, including that uh, Korean KETS uh, tend to, tends to focus more on the compliance side rather than the market function. So that's why I think that the current UN administration tries to actually boost more market side of the KETS so that it can function much better than before. Of course, that 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 uh, EU is uh, running that. Korea is uh, similar to EU one, but I'm sure that the Korean version might be also distinctive and unique in order to reflect the situation of Republic Korea. Right. Uh, perhaps you could add a few words about the GGGI and its role in the international economy. I know Dr. Lee. I think you used to work at GGGI. <laughs> yes. Um, to explain briefly about the GGGI, uh, it's an international organization um, that aims to support developing countries' formulation and implementation of their own customized green growth plans and strategies, um, which can contribute to their nationally determined contributions. And um, at that time, Korea played an active role, as um, Professor Chung mentioned earlier, in realizing um, the idea to create this new international organization on climate change through a partnership and to physically hosting the headquarter in Seoul. And Korea aimed to play a bridging role between the developing countries um, who look to Korea that has more recently achieved economic development and uh, develop, developed countries who are in the position to help the developing countries um, in their climate action. So the GGGI has since expanded in its membership and has currently 43 member countries and um, carrying out projects in multiple developing countries. Thank you. If I if I may, uh, uh, I would like to add uh, one uh, more, you know, you know, hidden story uh, related to the role of the uh, sort of the experts in the U.S. Actually, uh, GG, when the Korean government was considering establishing the GGGI, initial important ideas were put forward by the, some of the leading experts in the United States, including the Professor Thomas Heller of the Stanford University. And then he was also uh, informally advising the then Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. And then also he was uh, close to some of the you know, high level political leaders in Republic of Korea. Uh, so that has helped actually Korea to be sure that, that this organization can be one of the leading you know, organization in the world in climate area. So there are actually a lot of good uh, roots uh, embedded in the US. And I do hope that the United States can be also important member country of the GGGI soon so that it can continuously make a contribution to the, the developing world. I think that would be good. I mean, I think the challenge with the United States is climate change itself is a challenge politically here and that, you know, we might take some steps forward. And even when we do 
you know, with the recent, you know, Inflation Reduction Act, uh, which, you know, if achieves its potential, could reduce emissions by 40% in the United States, but it's clearly caused trade tensions with South Korea and some of our trading partners with the way it was set up. So uh, even when we take a step forward, we sometimes take a step back as well. Uh, so I think that's one of the challenges. Um, so Dr. Lee, you know, South Korea, to turn back to it, was, you know, the first Annex One or non-Annex One country, excuse me, in the United Nations Framework for Climate Change Conference to submit a voluntary emissions reduction goal. How is Korea's international emissions reduction pledges or how have their pledges changed over the years? Uh, so Korea's emissions reduction goal has been updated several times over the years. Um, as Professor Chung mentioned before, in 2009, the greenhouse gas reduction pledge was to reduce 30% from business as usual by 2020, which was an ambitious mitigation target as a non-annex one country then. Um, during the Park administration in 2015, the goal was updated to reduce 37% below the BAU level by 2030. Um, in 2020, during the Moon administration, the target was again updated to reduce greenhouse gases by 24.4% compared to the 2017 level by 2030. Um, and at this time, the reduction target that was previously based on the BAU was changed to absolute emissions amount. Um, the NDC was again updated last year and Korea announced the goal to reduce emissions by 40% of 2018 levels by 2030. And compared to the previous target, this was a significant improvement, but also it could be challenging to achieve. Um, but Korea also introduced um, sectoral goals, um, scenarios and policy measures um, so that the policy and um, so that the target could be met. Um, and overall, Korea continues to assess and reevaluate the mitigation target considering a situation, um, industrial structure, environment and resources and capabilities and suggesting new sectoral goals and measures as well as plans to not only reduce domestically but also to reduce by utilizing the international carbon market. So I have one quick follow-up question for you, Dr. Lee. Um, you mentioned that Korea's baseline is 2018 um, for emissions reductions. Um, the United States, it's 2005. Uh, could you maybe give us some idea on like why countries have different baselines from which they're cutting emissions? Um, I think that's a very difficult question to answer. I mean, I think countries have different ways of um, measuring and setting up their target. Mm -hmm. And since there is no one um, guideline or um, that is suggested by IPCC or UNFCC uh, that you have to follow. I think it's really up for the countries to figure out and measure how how much emissions that they are emitting and um, what kind of goals they could set by a certain year. And I think all countries are currently trying to set something for the 2050 um, carbon neutral target. So. Okay. so in other words, that uh, there is a, a good legal basis actually to support why the uh, you know different uh, you know baselines have been set because the, if we read the uh, UNFCC text uh, there is a national circumstances so all these matters uh, needs to be done actually respecting the different uh, circumstances of uh, different countries based on different circumstances your country must do your best efforts to address climate change overall then we can achieve the goal at this time under the Paris Agreement to the retarget so in that sense it's a natural so because we are all different, but we are moving together. Okay, thank you. So, Dr. Chung, we've talked a lot so far about the Yimabak administration. How did Korea's approach to climate change shift under Park and Hay? Well, uh, Park Geun-hye administration uh, has been known that to some extent that they had less, uh, you know, interest in climate change. Uh, if you see the uh, their activities at the international level, maybe you can interpret uh, their uh, her administration in that way. However, uh, for instance, uh, you are talking about the renewables, hydrogen, and the nuclear, and all the all those uh, you know measures to reduce greenhouse gas emissions are based on the low carbon technology, right? Uh, you agree? Uh, in the sense, Bakune automation has very important contributions in the sense of the uh, you know developing their 
technology policies, actually, under the concept of the creative economy at the time. And then so uh, 10 major Korea and the climate change technologies were identified during the Park Geun-hye administration. Uh, very few people know this. However, if you take a look at uh, how her administration made contributions to the climate change in this matter, I don't think the Moon Jae-in administration's energy transition policy didn't or could not come in. Even the current, uh, you know, Yun administration's climate policy as well. So there is a good, you know, contribution. And then based on that, Moon Jae-in also moved ahead, focusing on the energy transition policy. So they boosted the importance of the renewables. Well, as you noted, the Moon Jae-in administration sort of quickly put in place a policy for energy transition. Um, so sort of maybe sticking with that, what were some of the objectives that the Moon administration had? And how did those objectives relate to climate change? Well, as I just said, that the uh, wooden administration uh, put a lot of emphasis on the important role of the renewables. In that sense, I see that uh, that's a very important contribution by Moon Jae-in administration. However, uh, there is uh, one missing point uh, that I found uh, when I took a look at uh, the implementation of the Moon Jae-in administration on energy transition policy. That's uh, they didn't count on the importance of the carbon amount or reducing greenhouse gas emissions. That is related to the controversial discussions about the role of the nuclear in Korea. So basically, as I just said that the natural circumstances uh, that this wording needs to be considered by Republic of Korea as well. We have very small uh, in a land size and uh, having the large population, uh, we have a very mountainous uh, in our surface and then we don't have a strong the wind or solar, right? As in the Saudi Arabia, right? Mm -hmm. So in the sense that uh, Korea naturally has uh, some limited cap capabilities to boost renewables, even if we are willing to do so. So in the sense that uh, our, I hope, I, I, I thought that, you know, Moon Jae-in administration could have done them much better if they have thought that Korea, uh, you know, the domestic matters to boost the renewables can be a test bed uh, for the international market, right? So that based on the experiences and capabilities that Korea could build, then it could go to developing countries, even to the United States or Europe, so that uh, we can work together with other countries. There's, so there was a somewhat, uh, you know, missing point. But overall, I think that uh, Moon Jae-in administration was on the right track, uh, you know, in addressing climate change. Uh, I, I take your point. Um, there was an article I was reading recently about was in relation to the Inflation Reduction Act and the chance to take and boost solar and wind in the United States and other renewables. And uh, the article pointed out that one thing that people don't realize is that even in the United States, it would require basically usage of land equivalent to about seven U.S. states. Um, so, you know, mm -hmm. there are some physical constraints that come into play with some of this. And Korea has its own, as you point out, unique challenges. Um, I right. would like to ask you one other thing about the Moon administration. Um, one significant step they took was a decision to pledge that Korea would become carbon neutral by 2050. How has that impacted Korea's efforts to address climate change? Well, uh, it brought uh, some of the important impact to the Korean society uh, in several ways. Number one, uh, that uh, commitment uh, came out when the Moon administration had about less than one year to go, okay, before new administration would come in. So in the sense that uh, uh, they uh, made a very important uh, commitment uh, to become a carbon neutral by 2050. Actually, that's the uh, sort of the general trend in international society through the United Nations. So they set a pretty important, uh, you know, goal uh, for the Korea, right, uh, in the long run. And then that is a big contribution. 
And then, then one uh, small, you know, sort of the limitations was that uh, they said too early, you know, before new administration would come in, right? Uh, you know, the goal that, that they would said would need to be implemented by the new administration now by the Yun Song Yeol administration. <laughs> so uh, I thought that well, they could, uh, you know, prepare for the sort of the groundwork. So that uh, no matter uh, which one, which party would uh, take the power, but then the new administration could, you know, develop the further and then the set, the, you know, all these policies very quickly so that we can, uh, you know, comfortably implement a well-prepared policy plans for five years. As you know, that Korea, you know, present term is five years. So that was a little bit uh, sort of the, you know, issue that uh, we could find. But overall, uh, Moon Jae-in administration tries to be on the you know, global you know, trend. And I think that that's what they made a contribute to Korea. Okay, thank you. I think uh, President Yoon has a, a big challenge. I know this 40% target is criticized by some business groups as too ambitious. And some environmental NGOs say it's not ambitious enough. Uh, what recommendations would you give to President Yoon as he tries to uh, keep these commitments with perhaps a different approach than outlined by President Moon Jae-in? Um, even if uh, you may have heard that, uh, you know, Yoon administration may to change the, some of the initial plans or climate change policies set by the Moon administration, mm -hmm. but he never said that he would change the target, right? right? So I think uh, that's uh, our, you know, climate energy team's contribution. So mm -hmm. we think that uh, no matter uh, detail, how much details could be changed. Uh, however, the uh, the target that the Republic of Korea set uh, in terms of the getting the credibility, uh, you know, our, you know, the, the showing our responsibility uh, for the society, it won't be changed. And then how to achieve that? That's another question, right? Uh, when we uh, took a look at the uh, you know, data uh, of the Moon administration after they announced the carbon neutrality for the last one year, actually there was an actual increase in the emitting the GHGs by more than 4%. So, and then that I think the Yun administration, uh, even if uh, they honor, they respect the general target, the general trend to go, but details would be changed, needs to be changed actually, mm -hmm. including the uh, developing new energy mix uh, based on the science. I think uh, it's likely to come the by end of this year. And then in order to, implement the uh, sort of the target uh, that's set by the Moon administration, Korean the NDC target has a very unique component. So it says that uh, out of the 40%, uh, we have a significant portion that we can reduce greenhouse gas emissions outside Korea and the using the market mechanism under the Article 6 of the Paris Agreement, we can share that the reduced amount to meet the Korean NDC target, okay? So, you know, we're concerned about uh, reducing greenhouse gas emissions globally, right? In the sense that Korea can uh, contribute a lot more to the global society. At the same time, if we can actually develop our policies, uh, you know, creatively enough and effectively enough, actually we can achieve that the 40 percent maybe more so uh, that's what I'm thinking about so in that context when the president Biden visited the Republic of Korea to have a summit meeting with the president Yoon I was hoping that the Republic of Korea could have a concluded a sort of uh, you know bilateral treaty uh, with the United States at the strategy level to address climate change so that Korea can work together with the United States, and then U.S. can and work with uh, Republic of Korea, not only in both countries, both in third party countries, in the South Asia, in Africa, in Latin America, so that we can uh, further help other countries to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and then we can uh, share those outcomes, not only for Korea, also for the United States. Is it a good idea? So there are a lot of good ideas, uh, you know, floating uh, inside the Korean circle. I do hope that all these good ideas can be integrated into the real policy implementation by UN administration. 
Well, in your view, is the Green New Deal, is that part of a good idea? Or do you think President Moon Jae-in's Green New Deal, that will that end now or continue on? Well, uh, New Deal, Green New Deal policy is a recovery plan, uh, you know, after COVID-19. So no matter how you name it, right, uh, and then, then it should come, right? Mm -hmm. In the sense that uh, I think the details uh, would be changed. But the general approach to address this uh, needs to remain actually with the uh, Yun administration. So uh, uh, Yun administration, I do hope that uh, they see uh, climate change issues are not just a matter of the environmental protection. It's a matter of the creating new jobs. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, talking about the new infrastructure and elevating Korea's role uh, at the international level and the creating new financing market, not only in Korea, but uh, you know, maybe together with the United States, right? Uh, there are many things. All these ideas can be you know, interrelated initial idea of the Green New Deal. As I said, even if uh, we, may not, we may not have known that before, there is a continuity in the Korean climate change policy because Korea, as I said, honor the uh, international efforts to address climate change. And then uh, that's the important factor. And then once again, I do hope that the United States must remain as the most important partner for the Republic of Korea to address climate change. I think that that's possible and that must be done. Mm -hmm. So I have one last question. Um, if you ask Korean uh, the population if they uh, favor green growth, uh, the polls say there's consistent support. But on the other hand, people are very worried about higher electricity prices. And if we look at other countries, Korea has relatively low electricity prices. And as part of uh, carbon pricing, we would expect electricity prices to go up. Um, between 2013 and until earlier this year, electricity prices were basically frozen. So I see kind of a conflict between uh, people wanting to have low energy prices, low electricity prices. Other hand, part of green growth means we have to have a higher price than carbon to, to shift to other types of energy. So how do we resolve this um, kind of conflict or dilemma? Well, um, you just uh, uh, mentioned a very interesting fact, actually. So uh, as you said, uh, since the 2013, that's uh, from the Park Geun-hye administration, uh, previous government has never increased the price of the electricity, right? Mm -hmm. Including the Moon Jae-in administration. Some people might thought that the Moon Jae-in administration was very active in the promoting climate change, but in detail, actually, they never increased the price of electricity. However, uh, Lee myung bak administration, they increased four times, okay? So uh, uh, now, uh, Yun administration, uh, you know, increased the price of electricity actually earlier this, this year once, mm -hmm. and then they plan to increase more. Well, I understand that, that it might give a pressure to the society. However, uh, once you take the small cost, actually your return will be bigger. And then if we, we keep the price lower, and we know that economists said that uh, unless you increase the uh, carbon price, you can, uh, you know, allure, you know, investments uh, uh, to the uh, renewable sector or other low carbon energy sector, right? So it's a signal actually that is necessary for the bigger investors to come. In the sense that I think that Korea needs to increase the electricity uh, more. Right, mm -hmm. in order to reflect the uh, price signals uh, that is uh, necessary to uh, to you know attract investments, not only from Korea, also from the outside as well. So, in the sense that uh, there are some the worrisome factors, but I think uh, potential you know benefits would be possibly bigger. Right. I agree one hundred percent. A very very good answer. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well. Thank you both. This has been a really informative discussion. We've covered a lot of ground today. Um, you know, I'm so glad we we're able to bring you here together to take and talk about your paper. For those watching, I would definitely commend it to you. Again, it's called South Korea's Climate Change Policy Achievements and Tasks Ahead. Um, it's a very good overview of the policies of the last three South Korean administrations and some ideas for the new unit administration going forward. Um, with that, um, Dr. Chung, Dr. Lee, thank you both very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you.